Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I bring you an interplanetary transfer tutorial. This will be generally applicable, but I'm keeping it as simple as possible. So there are many complex topics that we're not going to consider here, and I understand people will want to bring those up, but uh, we will save those for another time. This is the bare minimum, and the bare minimum uh, starts with waiting. You have to wait for the proper planetary alignment so that you can get there efficiently. Now, if you have overwhelming delta V, you can get anywhere you want uh, whenever you want to. But we're assuming that you want to get there with a nice trim mission and you want to use as little delta V as possible. And in that case, you have to wait. So I'm going to just give you the angles between the planets to get to the other planets from Kerbin and then to come back to Kerbin from those other planets. Now, these angles work if you assume that everything is flat with respect to each other. Uh, for the most part, that works with the Kerbal system. Most of the planets are in line. Uh, we can sort of see uh, the ones that aren't are Drez, and we see Elu as well. Otherwise, uh, Jewel, uh, Duna, Eve, and Moho is a little bit tilted, but those are basically in line. So it's an okay approximation, uh, these angles that I'm going to give. And then it's also necessary to consider whether the orbits are lopsided, whether they're elliptical. Most of the orbits in the Kerbal system are circular or close to it, like Joule, Duna, Kerbin, Eve, and Moho is a little bit lopsided. But uh, the Elu is pretty lopsided, but it's so far out that the velocities are a little bit slower there, so it's not too bad. But it's worth considering. And Drez can give some trouble too. You can see it's a little bit lopsided and a little bit tilted. That's one reason people sometimes have trouble with Drez. So keep that in mind. Drez is a little bit difficult. But the angles are when... If you assume that Kerbin is basically at 3 o'clock, if you imagine a clock, Right about here would be a good opportunity for Moho. Moho should be 108 degrees ahead of you. It's actually technically 251 degrees behind you, but that ends up being 108 ahead. So right here, this would be a good time to go to Moho, if you can remember that angle there. Okay, and then we're going to keep time warping. The angle between Kerbin and Duna that you should use is roughly 45 degrees, it's 44 point something. But something like this would be good. Now it would be a good time to go to Duna. So why is it a good time to go to Duna? Well, the efficient way to go is to use as much of Kerbin's own velocity around the system as possible. And Kerbin's going this way right now. And the sun is going to sort of pull you in arc like that. And then when you meet Duna, you want to be going in the same direction as Duna. So if you take a look, your velocity is going to be going this way. Kerbal is going to curve you around. And then when you get here, you're going to be going in the same direction as Duna. You're not going to be going at some angle uh, to Duna's orbit. So what we want to do is make sure that Duna is far enough ahead, because Duna is going slower around Kerbal than Kerbin is. So we need to give it a lead, so that when we get there, it's going to get there. And right there is a good place to meet it. Let's say we made it over here. Well, you can see if we go a curve around Kerbal and hit it there, well, our vector is going to be like that, right? If you look at the arc, I'm sorry I can't draw it for you, but it's going to be a skew. It's not going to be exactly in line with Duna's orbit. And that means that when we get there, we're going to have to take more delta V to slow down. Now, we could solve that problem by going into Duna's atmosphere, but that's a little bit unpredictable for a beginner, unless you want to go directly onto the surface, in which case you just go deep into Duna's atmosphere and Duna will slow you down, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, if you're trying to capture into orbit around Duna, we have to be very careful to make sure that we meet up with Duna in such a way that we do not have a whole lot of velocity with respect to Duna. And the best way to do that is to meet up with it here so that we are tending to be in the same direction as Duna when we meet up with it. And that will minimize how much velocity we have. And then it'll be easy to capture. So uh, just remember, if you, it's tempting to try and get there quickly, 
right? It's tempting to get there over here. That's that's a quicker transfer. You'll get there faster. And from Kerbin, it won't seem like it costs that much, much extra. But when you get there, it's going to cost a lot more to slow down. So that's the catch. And the converse, when you're coming back home, will be the same thing. But in the case of Kerbin, it just means you need a more robust heat shield. Uh, in this case, of course, we don't have to worry about heat. There's no thermal stuff in Kerbal Space Program 2 right now. So you'll just come back down happy because Ker uh, Kerbin's atmosphere slows you down. Uh, so that's not much of a problem coming back home. But in general, keep in mind the four quantities that are going to be involved in your mission. Uh, the first one is the amount to get there. The second one, the amount to capture into orbit. And if you have an atmosphere to work with, you can have it air break you, that, uh, have the atmosphere slow you down. Then the quantity to come back home, and then the quantity to uh, either capture into Kerbin's orbit or at least make sure that you hit the atmosphere properly. So that is the mission planning part when you build your rocket. Uh, I think Drez is coming up here. This is about the right angle for Drez. Drez should be 82 degrees. So that's about 82 degrees right there. You can take up a protractor to check your angles, or you can just sort of eyeball it. But again, Drez is lopsided, so it's a little bit complicated. And inclination also complicates things. You may have to do a mid-course adjustment because right now you're here, and when you get here, you'll be here, right? You'll be in line with where Kerbin would be if it's already extended out. You'll need to correct that. And to correct that, you need to do a mid-course adjustment, ideally around here-ish, let's say. Halfway through your mission, you'll tilt your orbit in order to get to Drez. In fact, I think I might do Drez as the uh, example, since it's so hard. I might even mess it up, we'll see. Okay, this right here will be good enough for Eve. Eve should be 54 degrees behind you. That is the angle that I'm just eyeballing it. That looks like 54 degrees to me. So that's the angle for Eve. And so the inner ones tend to be behind you. Uh, oh, Moho is so behind you that it's actually in front of you. And then the outer planets will be ahead of you. Um, this is a little bit past the Jewel window, but Jewel is very forgiving. Uh, it's one of the easier ones to hit because it's got such a huge sphere of influence. Jules should be 96 degrees ahead of you, so, but even this, which is more like 90, is okay. Uh, this should be okay for Elu. Elu should be 101 degrees, so a little bit more than Jewel. Jewel is 96, Elu is 101. And if there were higher planets, they would tend to be very close to 100 to 110, uh, somewhere around that range. Uh, there's a limit to how much it's going to be. That's about it as far as the windows to the planets. I'm just going to quickly tell you the windows to come home. That might be an important thing. And then there's the windows between the planets. Let's say you wanted to go to from Duna to Jewel. That's a possibility. There is an angle for that. This, uh, there is a general equation for these things that's simple, a phase angle equation. And then there's the more complex, complex equations that would give you the situation for solving with inclination and eccentricity. And the result of those are called a pork chop plot, but that is one of those complicated things we're not going to talk about. So uh, the angles to come home are from Moho back to Kerbin is with Kerbin 76 degrees ahead. From Eve back to Kerbin, Kerbin should be 36 degrees ahead. From Duna back to Kerbin, Kerbin should be 75 degrees behind. From Drez back to Kerbin, Kerbin should be 330 degrees behind or 30 degrees ahead. And from Jewel back to Kerbin, uh, 48 degrees behind. Kerbin should be 48 degrees behind. And from Elu back to Kerbin, Kerbin should be 80 degrees behind. Now, if you have trouble remembering all this, you don't want to bring up my video again, there is a website, ksp.olex.biz, uh, gives all the results and uh, in a nice friendly format so that you can figure it out. Okay, so that's first lining up with the planets. Now I said I would do Drez even though I hate doing Drez, but we will go to Drez. So I would be satisfied that that's close enough just eyeballing it. Whoops. All right, to the VAB. 
So what I've decided to make is a Voyager-like probe. I call it Voyager, but it's not really looking like Voyager at all. Uh, the point is it's got a lot of Delta V and an antenna. The root part is actually the controller on the rocket here. Hopefully this will work out for us. So two RTGs, a whole bunch, a big antenna, and an ant engine at the bottom should be sufficient. It's got plenty of Delta V. Uh, it's just not going to tell us what that is right now. <laughs> uh, we got a decoupler there. Uh, right now it's not telling us because the, the controller is the root part, so that's complicated. We got a poodle here. And I've sort of made it into an atlas. So the Poodle's like a dual engine centaur, and this is the best I could do for an atlas right now. Uh, let's not look at it too much. Uh, let's go ahead and launch it, and we'll take up the story of how to get to another planet when we're in orbit. You generally do not need to worry about launch timing or launch direction when it comes to targets in the Kerbal system for interplanetary transfers. Uh, there are some finicky things, like I said, but generally speaking, you don't need to worry about that. So we are just going to go, and we're going to go to a 90 degree angle per normal, and then work from there. Okay, turning off the booster engines and separating them off. Okay, staging. And ignition. And fairings. Oh yeah, that's exactly how I wanted the fairings to go. <laughs> I'm sure they'll disappear soon enough. There they go. I didn't put enough electric charge on here. I hope it holds out. I mean, we've got RTGs and everything. Oh, why is it flipping? I can't control it. I can't stop it from... Oops. That's weird. We are not in the presence of atmosphere and it has a reaction wheel. Okie dokie. Well, we've got some weirdness already. That's the trouble with doing tutorials in KSP2. Maybe I should just do them in KSP1. You never know when the game is going to mess up your tutorial, so... Well, let's hope. It's, it's not pointing. Something about the Poodle engine is off. Uh, I'll just uh, use less thrust. Yeah, I don't know what's causing the game to have a tendency to one side here. And we're obviously going down right now, but we'll get to orbit. Don't know how well we're going to do the transfer as plotted, but... I uh, uh, see, I've let go, I've got SAS on. Uh, maybe it can hold it, but if I throw a lot more than this, it'd have trouble. Okay. Well, we're making orbit, and let me demonstrate that it's going to cause trouble when I throttle up. So I, I'm not touching WAS and D or anything, and throttle up. You can see it leaning to one side and then unable to control it. It's trying to control it, it's leaning to one side. Nothing on here should be asymmetrical. But yeah, it's leaning to one side for some reason. Well, I'll cut it there for now. So, for interplanetary transfers, going back to the tutor tutorial, as we have a situation here, you need to be in as low an orbit as possible, so as close to Kerbin as possible, because that's beneficial for uh, transfers. Anything in the prograde or retrograde vector has a benefit as far as how fast you're going, and you're going faster when you're in a lower orbit. So. It's best to be as tight in as possible when you're making an interplanetary transfer. There's mathematical reasons for this. It has to do with energy being the square of velocity, to keep it short. Anyway, we're going to target Drez. And Drez is at the right angle. And if you're going to a higher planet, assuming that you're going in a clockwise direction, sorry, counterclockwise direction, prograde direction, so you're going around this way, if you're going around this way, then your exit is going to be somewhere between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And if you go to the website ksp.olex.biz, uh, you will be able to find the exact angle, but usually you can find it by trial and error by putting your maneuver somewhere around here. If you're going into one of the inner planets, Moho or Eve, you will want to put your 
maneuver on this side between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. And when I say 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, it's in reference to Kerbin's own motion. So Kerbin is going around this way. Its motion is like that. So that becomes 12 o'clock. So we orient everything with respect to Kerbin's own motion being 12 o'clock. And in that case, we're exiting between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock to the outer planets and exiting to the inner planets Moho and Eve between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Now, if we're going retrograde around Kerbin for some strange reason, it would be reversed. So if we're going around the other way or clockwise, going around this way, then to the outer planets it would be over here, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and to the inner planets it will be 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock over there. And so what we want to end up having happen is, if it's on the inner planets, we want to go against Kerbin's uh, velocity. So directly this way. That's our outward path should be in this direction. For the outer planets, for Drez, Jewel, and Elu, and Duna, we want our path to be in line with Kerbin's velocity because we're doing a boost up. In the opposite situation for Moho and Eve, we're reducing our speed with respect to the sun. And we're using Kerbin's own speed as a basis and then reducing it a little bit. What we generally don't want to do, let me just show you for the Drez situation. So something like this would be efficient because we're using all of uh, Kerbin's own velocity and then adding some of our own, right? And then we'll boost up nicely. See, uh, this little bit will get us all the way out to Duna, past Duna, in fact. Not quite enough for Adrez. I'll talk about how much Delta V it is for each of the planets in a sec. But what we don't want to have happen is, but sometimes might be necessary, is something askew like that. Now, again, sometimes that might be necessary for timing. If you got the transfer window wrong, you might need to meet up with uh, Duna in sort of a different way or Drez in a different way, and then you'll go askew like this. So basically what this means is you got the timing wrong, or you're trying to get there faster than the normal transfer, which is called a Holman transfer. The normal transfer being 180 degrees around the sun from Kerbin, so here, or for Drez, there. Uh, if you want to get there faster or slower for some reason, then you'll be askew like this. And that might be because you got the transfer timing wrong. But right now we need to, for Drez, use about 1,500 meters per second. So even without looking, we can see the required delta V should be about 1,500. Let's just go with that for now. And then we can turn our orbit so that's in line with Kerbin's orbit. That's not quite. And you can see we're getting pretty close to that 3 o'clock mark. And then we're a little bit short still, so it's a little bit more than 1,500. Now, here's the problem with Drez, right? We have an inclination. Drez is inclined by 5.1 degrees with respect to Kerbin. And you could do the correction at the ascending or descending node, in this case, the descending node, but. Generally speaking, that's actually less efficient because you're close to the sun. Prograde and retrograde burns are good when you're going fast and close to a gravitating body. Inclination burns are better when you're further away from the gravitating body. And there's mathematical reasons why the best balance is to just do a mid-course adjustment somewhere here. But let's just try it out. Let's say I did a maneuver here to correct that 5.1. And this is close enough to the descending node. Let's see how much it costs. Okay, well, that mostly corrects it. We'll have to adjust the original burn. But uh, is there a way that I can see this burn? <laughs> I guess we can't see how much that is. Well, that doesn't help with planning, does it? Uh, somebody knows how to uh, check how much that would be. I'd love to know that. But anyway. Um, maybe I'm just missing it there. But what we're going to do is actually alter our orbit at the mid-course. And you can see we're not really meeting up with it tangently. In other words, we should only be touching the orbit of Drez at one point, not two points. 
So we'll also adjust our original burn too. We did a little bit too much there. Just one point. And 180 degrees away from Kerbin. Now, it looks like the timing's off. And this is because Drez is lopsided, right? Now, the 82 degrees was relevant on average, but this is clearly lopsided. So our timing is off, and therefore we are going to go askew, like I had said. What is happening is that we are meeting up with it at 1a, but it's already at 1b, because this is the fast part of its orbit, and this part is the slow part where it's higher around the Kerbal. So that's why we've got a discrepancy from the a2. For the circular orbit ones, it's fine, but we need to go faster. And so you see, skewing the orbit in this direction, and ultimately potentially going past the ideal point will get us closer and closer here. And then pulling it the other way to the right will get us further and further away. But this costs more. You can see by going at the suboptimal time, it's going to cost us more delta V. But we have no choice because we got the transfer window wrong, which is why waiting for the right time is the best thing. But this is instructive. There are better ways of figuring out the window than just getting an angle, and one of those ways is the pork chop plot. In KSP1, we have a mod called Kerbal Transfer Window Planner, and Transfer Window Planner will give you a plot that also takes into account the inclination and the eccentricity of the orbits. And in that case, you can make a much better plan. So this is pretty bad as it is, but it can be done. At least on arrival, we'll still be reasonably efficient. Now, we're pretty close there. Let's move this back to where it's mid-course. And do the rest of the filling around there. Trez also doesn't have a super duper SOI to work with. There we go. Now we've got an encounter with Drez. I'm not going to care too much right now about how close we're getting to Drez as long as we have an encounter. We'll fix that when we do the mid-course adjustment and we will mid-course correction and we'll adjust the mid-course correction. We have to start this burn early because it doesn't seem like we can use all of our thrust safely. So our timing, which had been precise, you have to do the burns very precisely around Kerbin for it to work out properly. But our burn is not going to be very precise. Because the poodle is acting up. I think it's the poodle. It might be something else. I'm just going to go with it being the poodle. So let's see. We're starting early deliberately. I hadn't fully made orbit before, but I knew we were doing the burn on the apoapsis side, so it was safe enough. Now it's making us go really far away from the maneuver vector. So in this case it's taking 1775. This is one of those reasons why you'll find Delta V maps online, and those are good for like the optimal situation. But sometimes you find yourself in a suboptimal situation, and that often occurs with circular and uh, weird inclination orbits. And so you'll the delta V maps are a guide, but they're not absolute as far as figuring out how much delta V you need to get from one place to another. O often they're overly optimistic. If you find that the burn timer is completely wrong and not keeping track of it, just try and make sure that you match the outward bound orbit that you were supposed to get. For inter interplanetary transfers, the burn around Kerbin is extremely sensitive to timing. The mid-course correction is not very sensitive to timing because you're going fairly slowly around the sun at that point. So that one is easier to correct and the timing isn't going to be too much of a problem. This one, the timing is a pretty big problem. 
Okay, I think that's as good a match as I'm gonna get. Obviously, we ended up doing it at the wrong time. We've got a gap there. But we will see what we can do with it as we go out. So, now we can look at... Well, we haven't done enough. So, I'll, I'll continue burning a bit. And I think it got rid of the mid-course adjustment, too. I don't know what those dotted lines are actually showing. <laughs> Let me clear target and set target again just to get rid of them. Since you have an inclination difference with the target in this case, you might want to look at it in this view sideways to see when you're really coming close. I think that's good enough. And then we'll replot the mid-course adjustment. So we're not too far off, you can see, see 1A and 1B there. But we are a little bit off there because of the bad timing. If you find that your timing is off after the main burn, uh, you can resort to a radial burn at the mid-course correction. This is not ideal and costs a lot. Either way, radial and inclination should be done at a mid-course correction, not immediately. So right-click on the 1A in order to get the distance from the target, see what makes it go down using the mid-course adjustment. See, it stops going down there and starts going up. Okay, well, let's do radial. We could do prograde and retrograde as well, see what combination of things works. So now it's not doing as much prograde, and then we can check uh, the inclination again. And then that guts to minimum there. I'd like to use as little radial as possible if we can. So if other stuff can work, that'll probably be cheaper. Let me just eliminate the radial and see if other stuff works. Resort to radial burns as little as possible. Radial is the blue markers, just if that's not clear. Inclinations, the purplish-pink ones, prograde, retrograde, the green ones, and radial is the bluish. So before we got the intercept, let's get uh, lose our intercept for a sec. Before we got the intercept, we have a relative speed here of 1,590 meters per second. So take note of that. That's what we need to get into orbit around Drez, roughly speaking. And then we got intercept. And I would like to focus on Drez. And it sort of shows our approach being really far away. And we can continue tweaking that here. You can see it's pretty far down. Oop. At the mid-course adjustment, we should have it all set up already as close as possible. You don't need that on the initial burn, uh, on the mid-course correction, definitely. There, we're hitting it. I could probably get this cheaper than what we've got right now. 387 is what we're looking at for the required delta V. And then if we made another maneuver at periapsis here, we're expecting this burn to take about 1,500 to capture. It might be less... I don't know, it's not really showing a capture, it's showing a crash immediately. I don't know what it's trying to show here. Right? It's like, it goes from escape to crash, so... It's not like it was gonna show us our Delta V there anyway, so... Let's just do it, and then we'll retroburn in Drez SOI and see what happens. So, we are time warping. With this whole business. And we leave Kerbin SOI now. We leave Kerbin SOI with a plan. So again, Drez is a fairly difficult one. Uh, for Duna, you probably won't even need the mid-course adjustment. Uh, you will be able to hit Duna right from the transfer out from Kerbin. And same for the most part with Eve. Moho might be a little bit more difficult and require a correction. Jewel will practically be the easiest. It'll take more Delta V to do Jewel, but uh, Jewel will suck you in because it's huge. Drez is relatively small, that's why it's a little bit hard to hit. We are in orbit around Kerbal, the sun. 
Okay, let's turn to the node and we'll start a little bit early just in case. And what we want to do is keep a focus on Drez to see when our orbit comes in and make sure to stop the burn at that point. In this case, it's sort of important that the burn is done in the right direction. You can see our burn is somewhat balanced between radial prograde and the inclination, the normal burn. Okay, well, the little thing is going up. So I'm going to also keep an eye on this distance from planet, but this is, doesn't seem like it's giving me the right information anyway. Uh, you know what? Let me get rid of this maneuver for now. As long as we're pointing in the right direction, let's see this distance from planet. Once we get rid of the maneuver, we can see this number, and that's going further away. So what I would like to do is turn around and see if we can get that closer. And I guess we overburned in some direction. I'm tempted to just use the probe and dump the centaur stage, but I'm worried that the probe is the problem. Okay, that's sort of being minimal. And I've got to do perspective burns in each of the main directions to see what might help. Well, see, this uh, normal direction seems to help quite a lot, so I'll just keep going like this. This is if you don't want to plot it or you don't trust the plot for some reason. Okay, that's minimal. Let's go to one of the other vectors. These are emergency procedures on the way to another planet. Okay, that's going up. So we know prograde will help. Okay, this is causing it to go down, so we'll do a little bit of this. So, this is in the Department of Troubleshooting. And there we've restored our encounter. Uh, well, uh, I think we can take that for now and just deal with it when we get there. Doesn't show our periapsis here though, which is worrying, but yeah, and as long as we have an encounter, let's go over there and show what happens when we get there as far as how to correct it. Okay, it shows our periapsis as 2,237. In this case, all you have to do is go radial in. That's radial out, this is radial in. And of course, come out of time warp. And then radial in will always bring you towards the target. Do this as soon as you get into the SOI if you're too high. If you're too low, you can do the opposite, radial out, which is that one. Inclination corrections could be done out here as well as soon as we enter the SOI. That's better than doing it close in. And you want to get the periapsis as close as possible to the planet because we're ultimately, in the case of getting into orbit around the planet, trying to do a prograde or retrograde burn, and those are best done at high speeds, which means at low altitudes. So I'll take 70 kilometers, and we'll proceed close to it. Drez apparently has a ring. They're trying to make it all fancy because nobody visits, visits it. Okay. Okay, I'll probably need some time to retro. We can sort of keep track of how much it's costing, and we're expecting about 1500 meters per second. To get to Joule takes about 2000, budget about 2000, and capturing depends on exactly how you do that. Just flying by some of Joule's moons can help you capture around Joule. It doesn't cost much to capture around Joule at all. but. I can't tell you about the, how much it takes to capture uh, necessarily because that depends on exactly how you got there. Like I said, if you get there a little bit askew, it could cost more. If what kind of approach you're getting, it'll change how much it costs to capture into orbit. So those quantities, I can't tell you. But to transfer to Moho takes about 1,700. To transfer to EVE takes about 1,020-ish. To transfer to DUNA takes 1,045. This is from low Kerbin orbit. Drez 
I'd say it takes 1,535, but as we've seen, uh, it may take more than that to correct the inclination or adjust for the fact that it's not circular. And we ultimately took an extra 500 to 600 or so to first adjust for the fact that it wasn't circular, and then at the mid-course correction adjust for the fact that it had the inclination. So that can be very costly, keep that in mind. Jewel, again, takes about 2,000. Elu takes about 2,100-ish. And it's a little bit easier to correct the inclination and eccentricity stuff for Elu because it's higher up. To get back from the various planets, Moho takes about 2,400. Eve takes about 1,400. Uh, Duna is the cheapest to get back from. It's about 600 or so, 600 to 700. And then Drez takes about 1,400, I would budget. Uh, budget more than that, because inclination and all that business. Jewel can take 3,000 to get back. And then Elu, 1,400. I don't know why the Jewel number said 3,000, though. Uh, put an asterisk on there. I'll need to double check that. I think that's because it was starting from a low Jewel orbit. If you're starting from a higher jewel orbit around where the moons are, it's probably cheaper. Uh, uh, if you're really tight around jewel, it can be a little bit different. Generally, burns are easier to do when you're closer to the gravitating body as far as prograde or retrograde is concerned, but being close to jewel, you're in the bottom of pretty deep gravity well, so that has to be taken into consideration too. Okay, let's see what fate awaits us when we decouple this stage and change to the ant engine. Vehicle is out of fuel. Ah, uh, the decoupler took the fuel from the... Ah. Uh... Oh no, this still... Uh, it was just because we were controlling from... Phew, okay. Alright. Go, please. Alright, alright. We're good. We've got done. It's still going. It's still going. Alright. Well, the ant is taking its time, and unfortunately the exiting SOI marker doesn't give a time to the SOI exit, unlike the KSP-1 marker. That would be helpful, because if the time to exit is going up, then there's a chance. If the time to exit is going down, there isn't. <laughs> so, uh, you need the time to exit to be going up. I think we'll capture fine. Uh, we might capture with a negative periapsis, which is complicated, but that just means we have to boost the periapsis. We've passed it already, but basically it means we'll capture, we'll have an apoapsis, and then we'll crash into the surface unless we boost it up again. Okay, here's the capture happening. And really, uh, keep it higher up if you want to boost that periapsis, but make sure that it's not in an obscene amount of time. Around Joule, it could be days. Or uh, around Jupiter, it could be like a year. So yeah, keep the time to apoapsis in mind, but otherwise it's better to keep it high up if you need to boost that periapsis, which we do in this case. 628 meters is a little bit too tight. Also, if you need to change inclination, it would be best to uh, keep it high. Okay, after we've gotten a safe periapsis, and again, here we could tilt our orbit to make it a polar satellite, but I don't want to. It would probably fit the bill a bit, but this is all right for now. This has an interesting sort of streak right here. That have something to do with the belt. So it's got a ridge here. Was the belt like sloughed off from that ridge or something? Okay. Yeah, it looks like the poodle stage was the problem. This is acting pretty reasonably at the moment. Okay, I think an uh, orbit that goes like that and potentially crosses the rings might be interesting for a research probe. So, our little plucky probe is in orbit around Drez despite the difficulties. So, uh, I don't know if I've covered everything people need to know, but everything that was necessary in the demonstration of the mission. So if you have any other questions, please do ask them. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.